Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide. And we are on February 21st, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Dew looking at space weather, earthquakes, and world weather. Starting out here looking at a very large filament eruption on the sun. That's right in the southern region. Observing here, huge plasma filament not really sure if it's earth facing or not but there was also in the southwestern and northwestern limb plasma filament releases looking here at the outgoing images we do have a lot of incoming sun activity as the dynamic the dynamics of the sun have changed ever since this filament snap on the sun and as well we have this one lonely sunspot, but is very active, it has already released the CME. You'll be able to see that here. Another light, you can really see that plasma filament whap onto the surface of the sun, sending a tsunami across half of the sun. And then you can see it activated that sunspot in the northern region. That's why I do believe that we're going to be accelerated into solar cycle 25, where we will see a lot more sunspots than we have in the past 10 years. 10, yeah, the past 10 years. Looking here at our geospace magnetosphere, being affected by 500 kilometer per second solar winds right now and persistent reaching to about 577 kilometers and it has been persistent over 500 kilometers for the past two days since the last update looking here at the pressure equatorial pressure and here's the lasco 2 image showing the cme in the last few images there so that is still to be monitored and forecasted pretty much it's a pretty sizable CME, largest we've seen in a while. Still just amazing to be able to observe the sun the way we do. Looking here at it under Lasco 3, you can see the large explosion. But also observing a very bright object coming into the right hand side here. I'm not really sure what it is just yet. But it is emitting quite a bright light. Could be Venus or Saturn or something coming in. Who knows? Looking here at the Schumann residence, as we are very calm and a low power of 7, quality of 10.8, base frequency 7.83 hertz. Looking at the earthquakes the last 24 hours, uh, we've had pretty busy North American plate. Starting out here with the most recent in California, in Cabazon, California, 3.3. And as well, Coso Junction, 3.3. Hawthorne, California, or Nevada. And as well, Oregon, 3.4, 3.5 today, but last night, we're just going to have to boost up the settings here to the last 48 hours. Last night in Bandon, Oregon, in the Juan de Fuca Plate, they did have a 5.1 earthquake at a 10-kilometer depth and as well a 4.9 earthquake that followed. And that's right, and my stream and internet was down last night, so could not provide the information. 
nor can I update. Hawaii as well, very active around Pahala, Mauna Loa quite possibly waking up. Seismicity continuing through the Aleutian Islands. Uh, that's not New Mexico. Adak, Alaska, 4.8. And very active equatorial region through Indonesia. A lot of fours ringing off today through Philippines, Indonesia, and as well, Carlsberg Ridge, Indian Plate. Still seeing a very active Loyalty Islands region and as well Tonga. 5.1 and a 5.0 in Tonga today. Deepest earthquake, 4.8. Fiji Islands, 539 kilometer depth. So very busy 24 hours, well, 48 hours now, looking on this map. Looking at South America, 4.7. West Chile rise. Moving up the coastline, Constitution. And as well, a 5.0 reported last night in Peru. Dominican Republic and Virgin Islands. They are rocking today as well. Seeing sizable earthquakes and swarming. 3.7, the largest and most recent through Dominican. And as well, we're looking at a lot of earthquakes through the New, New Madrid into Texas as well and New Mexico. Oklahoma still, of course. But something, you know, this... This particular app doesn't record all of the earthquakes in the region, but USGS does. And also, there is also in uh, Mirimachi, 2.5 Canada. Looking here at the USGS right across the United States, this is the last seven days. You can see very active northwestern region, especially northwest of Yellowstone. That's right, we're seeing it. Quite a few smaller earthquakes popping up northwest of Yellowstone and as well a lot of action through the Juan de Fuca Plate, California, and in through Oklahoma. You gotta wonder what's coming up or what is shifting. 5.1 there rep reported in Russia. And that's it for the last 48 hours. Let's have a look at the last seven days. And around the world, we're seeing an increase now through North America and as well Alaska, the region, the regions that have been warned. But most of the earthquakes here being reported are down in Loyalty Islands region. But please stay safe, stay aware and prepared and be ready because we're about to go on a rocky roller coaster ride provided to you by the sun over the next week, we're going to see some drastic changes. So stay tuned, stay aware and prepared to Morning Dew. Appreciate all of the almost 20, well, just over 23,000 followers. I'm truly grateful and I'm honored to have so many followers. Staying aware and prepared. Thank you for choosing Morning Dew. That was the last seven days for earthquakes. Have a look here, Pacific Disaster Center, giving an update on the most recent volcanoes being updated. Popo in Mexico, and as well, Reventador, Ecuador, Swiss and Ajima, Japan, Sangay in Ecuador, Nevadas de Rules, Sabincaya in Peru, Era in Japan, Pacaya, Guatemala, Manam, P Papua New Guinea. Oh boy, wrong. There's at least 16 volcanoes that were updated today as well as Etna, still huge fountains of lava spewing from her caldera. Thoughts of prayers going out to humanity as we are going through all of these changes together. And I feel that we are lucky and that we are blessed to be here. Looking here, winter storms, northwestern United States, and a tropical depression, Dujan, who luckily calmed down, didn't cause any damage to the Philippines, and as well, Guambi, who is going to be heading south to Antarctica. Yeah, that's right. It's heading south to Antarctica. 
watching the five-day forecast, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Looking here at the tropical system that is heading towards New Zealand as well. Well, it's kind of a subtropical system, but it looks like a hurricane from satellite imagery. And it could ramp up over the next 24 to 36 hours. So keep an eye on that one, New Zealand. Let's get to the five-day forecast brought to you by Meteor Earth and Meteo Mike. And yes, winter is far from over. Looking here, starting here, home base Calgary, Alberta, as we do have snow moving in tonight and tomorrow, possibly Tuesday as well as the colder temperatures move in and a big low moves in from northwestern BC. So this is going to be a big winter storm for northwestern regions and as well the prairies moving eastward in the long range forecast. You can see here by Friday, minus 40 temperatures are going to be trailing behind the low pressure system that came in from the north and there's high pressure right behind the low pressure that is moving in from Siberia. So that is going to be dragged in by the low pressure system and these cold temperatures are going to continue and be persistent throughout March. I'm pretty sure that's my forecast. That's my forecast. Um, this five day forecast is showing quite a winter storm for BC all of BC and then moving eastward in the long range into Friday winter storm and wintry mix across eastern United States and across Ontario Wednesday into Thursday and then an Alberta Clipper you're welcome coming over Ontario for the weekend Watch for extreme weather to develop in the long-range forecast here in the Gulf states. As those cold temperatures will be moving back into the United States and as far south as Florida, I'm sure of it. Looking at drastic changes across the planet, and it's due to these vigorous low-pressure systems, our magnetic field, and quite possibly a pole flip, which has not happened in 42,000 years. Looking here over Africa, low pressure system finally moved away from the continent, another one developing, but watch this low pressure system, her uh, tropical storm Guambi, as it heads straight to Antarctica, right to the coastline, crazy. And that's what the hurricanes were doing last season in the Northern hemisphere. So watch for those things to do it again. Low pressure system is going to be affecting here parts of northern China and Russia. You're going to be dragging around those cold temperatures as well from Siberia. Parts of Eastern Europe going to be cooling off as well. And those cold temperatures, yes, that's the high pressure ridge that will be fueling around into Alaska. Across China and as well Japan, watch for heavy rains, torrential rains possibly through Japan as a system moves through. Pretty vigorous a system. Philippines, unscathed from the subtropical storm. And then watching here, Indian Ocean, watch for a tropical, tropical cyclone to form south of Indonesia, heading westward. Overlooking Australia, the rains continuing through the Northern Territory and as well Southeastern regions. Five day forecast just shows a lot of rain for parts of New Zealand for the tropical storm, well, for the system that's heading towards you. Overlooking South America, not too much to talk about except daily evaporation rains, heavier towards central regions as per usual. Can you leave you here looking at the major systems that are going to be affecting North America in the coming days? I want to thank everybody for watching. Stay safe, stay warm, get ready for the cold, aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your morning due. Thanks for watching today. Bye bye.
you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.